We're also going to deal with a more contemporary Aboriginal artist, Emily Kangawari, who's moved away from representative work to focus on ideas of abstraction. Here we're seeing the hybridization of basically contemporary art, tying in these Aboriginal ideas with more traditional Western ideas of contemporary art, and we get this hybridization. We've seen this in a number of other cultures. We will see this in a number of other cultures as well. And she creates Untitled, very common for abstract or contemporary works. Now, she began painting late in life after founding a woman's commune. And her painting clearly reveals a background in fabric art. It has a very textile feel to it. It almost seems sewn together. It reminds us maybe of bark cloth or some of the other natural materials that we tend to see in the Pacific. Now, this is actually inspired by the Australian landscape. And you're looking at it and going, well, that's ridiculous. It is not inspired at all by the Australian landscape. There are no kangaroos. There are no emus either, but we don't hold that against it. What she's doing is taking the color profile, which I put a landscape beneath it, taking the color profile and using that to bring out ideas of the Australian landscape. So she's not trying to represent it through illustration, but rather through color, giving us that idea, the concept of the outback without actually showing us what it looks like. Now, through the use of pointillism, she, she's suggesting images of an arid landscape. Of course, if we look at an Australian landscape, we'll pop back for a second here, uh, you'll notice leaving aside the street sign, which is awkwardly placed in this photo, you'll notice the plants don't take over the landscape. This isn't what you would find in, say, the eastern United States, where you might have a big, you know, area landmass of woods or uh, farmland or something like that. Here we see just sort of points of color, especially off the road, where we have, you know, one solitary bush growing, surrounded by a clump of grass, surrounded by you know, maybe nearby another clump of plant. So this suggests pointillism, and the pointillism suggests this sort of idea of the outback. The massive size, roughly 5 feet by 15 feet, is meant to indicate the vastness of the landscape. A painting that large is going to strike you immediately as vast. It's going to have a visceral sense. It's going to remind you perhaps of American abstract expressionism, where they created these massive canvases to get rid of anything in your peripheral view. You're stuck with this piece. And consequently, as you stand in front of it and you look at it, you really pay attention to that train of thought running through your mind. What are you thinking about as you explore the piece? It's bringing ideas out of you. It's not meant to push ideas into you as if it were a piece by Michelangelo or someone like that trying to represent something very specific. Instead, she's just representing the idea of the outback and then letting you fill in, well, the rest. 